Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the Hypermind FTB Infinity Evolve server. How's everyone doing? I hope you're doing well. Before we get into today's project and progress report, I've got to tell you, thank you so much for taking a little bit of time out of your day to share with me. Hopefully you are entertained and inspired for your own builds. And if you do find some inspiration, feel free to let me know in the comment section down below or send me a screenshot at MC Soap the Great on Twitter. But that's going to be it for this particular piece. Let's get out of F5 mode, put back on our armor as we do, and let's take a look at some of the progress that has occurred. I still have not done a bridge or a dock or anything in regards to this little island right here. But you can see that we've got a little bit of progress as the sun goes down. A little bit of progress here. Let's, can we take a nap? Nope, no nap yet. So last time we were together, I had put some uh, columns of wood over on the castle keep, and I've taken that and carried it all the way around the castle walls as well. And now I've started putting on a little bit more decoration. You can see the, uh, the texture that we're going for, and that is with the dark oak. We're using dark oak painted cobblestone walls. So you remember the painter from a few episodes ago. I've been chucking some cobblestone walls into that with the dark oak texture. And that's all this is. You see? Painted wall. And there's a painted fence. So like we had already done for the farms. Just painted an oak fence because we don't have dark oak fences in this version of Minecraft yet. So that uh, I've taken that all the way around. So you can see kind of the design coming together. It's a little bit more, I don't know, it's, it's getting a little bit busier, a little less monotony in terms of just this small skystone brick there. So I wanted to break that up, and this is performing that quite nicely. We still got to come in, we'll get some, some good ramparts going that our guards can walk along, and there are guards in this game. I intend on transporting some guard villagers over here eventually, if we get this thing done. Uh, let's see, what else? Other progress. It's mostly cosmetic here. You can see that I've gotten rid of some of the gray wool over on this side and replacing it with gravel to give us a little bit more realistic of a path. And we'll come through here later on. Once we get a few more buildings going over, over inside the castle town, get some, especially today's project, once we get that going, then we'll start really focusing on some of the cosmetics or some more of the cosmetics we've been doing a little bit here and there mostly because i've been waiting to get a little bit of time to record this little intro bit with you let's see anything else i don't think there's anything else uh, maybe perhaps that i have moved the wheat farm took care of that other than that i think that's it so the wheat farm is now within the radius of this personal anchor and I might move the wool farm over into the same radius right now if, let's uh, pull up the chunk borders you can see that uh, this right here this chunk is on the outer edge of that personal anchors loaded radius so the wool farm is half in half out so this this entire portion of the sheep farm wool farm is not in the loaded chunks whenever I'm logged in. So anyway, enough about that. What are we going to be doing today? Well, this is something that many others here on the server have already taken care of. So they've been doing quarrying. They've been taking care of getting some more automation going. And one of the things that you really have to do in modded is ore processing. So let's take a look at my ME system. I've got a wireless terminal. I've got a little bit of tick lag going on. I think the server really needs a reset. We can clean out our NEI search there. Let's just take a look at ore. So you notice that I've got a lot of ores that are still in their standard form. And I, I mean, at these levels, I, I don't want to do that myself. 10K, 10 ore. I don't, I don't want to process that manually. And that's what I've been doing. So everything you see here, everything you see has been processed manually. So whenever I, I need some tin, I take it over to my pulverizer and I just 
put it in there myself and I run it through the furnace or I run it through the alloy smelter, whatever the case may be. Let's get rid of the chunk border boundaries there. Yeah, so I just come over here and do it automatically and I don't like that. Uh, let's see. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at a few ore processing options that are available. Now, if you watch some of the other hyperminers, you will have seen various ways of doing that. Benito is doing it with IC2, and Nimson is doing it with a mix of thermal expansion and um, AE2. And Ector, he's mixing and matching, but he's using AE2 and thermal expansion as well. I wanted to get into something a little different. So I've put together the materials we're going to need right here, and that is we're going to be using some, we're going to be using a builder's block. I got this idea from TDC and that dude Chaos, who is a member on the Hypermind Vanilla server. I'm also using some thermal expansion machines here, induction smelter, pulverizer, redstone furnace, all resonant varieties. We're going to put some augments in there too eventually, but right now we're just going to get this whole thing set up, uh, or get the general structure set up. I was going to use energy conduit at 640R if a tick, but it wasn't that much more expensive to do this one, and that'll make sure that these machines can keep up with what I'm going to be throwing at them. All right, so next up, we're going to be using Steve's Factory Manager. Yeah, that's right. I quite enjoyed using the Steve's Factory Manager mod for the automated sky stone. So we're going to be doing that once again. I'm going to need, we'll need a Tesseract. We'll need these Ender Chests as well. And we'll need the Ender Pearls. The rest of this stuff we'll come back in and do uh, at a later point. Okay. So first what I want to do is get the general structure done with you. We're going to put the ore processing section right here. Let's put away all of this stuff. And the first thing we got to do is the block gate. Now, I want the block gate facing down because there is a bug currently in uh, Steve's Factory Manager where if the block gate is facing upwards, it tends to put out blocks both in the block above and the block above that. So two blocks above, it'll uh, place blocks. We don't want that. We just want them placing one. So. We're going to do this. I'm going to do a three by three section of block gate, and now I have blocked myself in. All right. Now the block gate itself. Don't don't worry. So some of you might be screaming if you know about Steve's factory manager. You might be screaming at me right now. Just wait. We're going to compact this, but first I need to show you the overall structure. We do have to have inventory cables attached to this thing, and we're going to do inventory cables right like so. And uh, from there, we will do uh, inventory cable there. And, oh, not what I wanted to do. So if you click a block gate, it's going to change the uh, face that actually places blocks. So we don't want to do that. We have to shift, right click, and there we go. And is that how that's going to go? Um, you know, at the moment, let's just try this. We'll, we'll put down a, a machine inventory manager. I've worked this out. I've worked the design out in creative, but I have not done any of the extra stuff in creative, like in terms of the wiring and all that. So let's, uh, we'll just put this down. I'm not going to set it up quite yet. I just want to give you an idea of how this thing is going to come together. We'll put the inventory manager right in like that. Okay, pulverizer, the redstone furnace, and then, yeah, inventory tweaks messing with things right there. All right. Next up, what we do is we bring in our energy conduit and item conduit. We're going to do energy block, item block. No, I didn't want that. Can we do... There we go. Okay, that'll work. And then... There we go. And then once again, there we go. All right. So uh, first things first, we need to make sure that this is outputting to the back. And we want, oh, we're past it. I want both of these outputting to the back. So we should have an item conduit. Yep, there we go. Extract, always active. And then this, I want to be insert only. This thing, same thing, we need uh, the 
back. Okay, like that. And then this one, both outputs to the back. And that's going to go into the Tesseract. So there we go. This one over here, we're going to disable like so. Over here, always active. And then insert on the RF. All right, so over here, we want for the items, we want to do insert. And then for redstone, we want extract. And same over here, insert on items, extract on the RF. So this is the general structure that we're going to go with. All right. What's going to happen is once I set up the flow charts, we're going to be spitting out fortunable blocks from the block gate. And that's where the builder is going to come in handy. We're going to put a fortune clearing quarry. So let's take a look here. We'll grab this card. It's a clearing fortune quarry. It's from the RF tools mod. And we'll put this into the, the builder. And we'll set up the shape appropriately for it. Uh, we'll make sure we don't turn on anything because we don't know where the card currently is uh, looking. And we're going to make it look at this 3x3 three three square that is under the block gates. So whenever these block gates put out blocks, the quarry should pick them up. Now the other thing is we're going to turn that builder on with a redstone emitter. All right. And we're going to do that with uh, one of the things here, the create redstone emitter. We can do that based on conditions that we find in the inventories. And then the inventories are all going to be color coded like so. So we'll have one of those and then how many? Okay. Yeah. So we got two of each and I'm going to be exporting from my ME system into each of these uh, corresponding inner chests and each of them will be a particular item. So we're going to have pulverizable items, smeltable items, and then other smeltable items, I guess, and then also fortunable items. And we will put, uh, put the fortunables out right here and have the builder take care of that. So that's tentatively what I'm going to do. Now the problem is that we can actually compact this sum by using something in uh, Steve's factory manager called, oh, what are they? I forgot. Um, let's just pull up Steve's factory manager. The word escapes me at the moment. So let's just do this real quick. It's going to be a cable cluster. Okay. So let's, we're going to tear, tear this all back down. You're, you're probably looking at me like, what in the world are you doing here? Soap? you just put that back up. Yes, but just wait, just wait. So we're then going to take that out and that out. All right, and we'll get the redstone emitter. Let's build some of these. Um, not there. We need to build, uh, let's see, one, two, three, twelve. Twelve of these guys. So we'll just put, put twelve up like so. And then we'll do this. All right, so we've got our cable cluster. And then one of them we want to mix with... A, do I have that on me? Yep, a camouflage and a redstone emitter. Okay, and we're going to turn this into. Uh, well, well, we'll come back to that. Don't worry. Then we'll we're going to turn one into just the. Or, well, we're going to turn two of them into just camouflage. Okay, like so. And then we're going to turn nine of them into block gates. So why do we need that? Well, what we're going to do now is cover this in with, and hopefully I have enough of these inventory blocks. I don't. So I'm going to have to make some more of those. And now we've got advanced cable clusters, and then we need to do the same thing. So I'm going to need, I'm going to need another batch of these inventory cables. So we may have to go over to my ME chest, but let's, Let's put these down real quick. We're going to put the redstone emitter one and the cable camouflage. And the reason we're using advanced cable clusters is because those will carry signal from the factory manager. And then we're going to put down the block gate ones as well. And we'll come back through in a little bit after I've made the additional ones. And I have to leave myself a little out here. All right. So 
again, facing downwards. I don't know if this is actually uh, the case anymore since uh, since I've turned them into advanced uh, cable clusters. So like so, and we should be able to, uh, once we check here, we should be able to create an input and then take a look. And you see how the block gates are all in there? Yeah, so that's what we're going to be working with. So even though you don't see the block gates out here, the advanced cable cluster is actually transmitting their position to uh, the factory manager, like so. We'll just cover back up our, our mess that we made. And I need to go make some more of these cable clusters, or of these uh, inventory cables. And I have to do that... It's just a lot easier if I come over here, and I shouldn't be flying, I should be walking, but let's just take a look here. What do we need? We need some weighted pressure plates. Get a few more of these. And we'll see how many we can actually make. Eight. Yeah, we'll just run until we don't have any more of those pressure plates. All right, that should be good. And now what we can do is actually put the cable cluster on and like so, like so. And that should be good. All right, so now what we can do is put our camouflaging cable cluster on underneath those machines. The reason we're going to do that, I'll show you once we get up here, is we can change the look. See, I want to hide what we're actually doing right here. We are going to put this behind a little bit of a you know, decorative design. We're going to hide kind of how the sausage is made, you know? And uh, yeah, so that's what we're working for there. Did I pick that up? Yes, okay. So the fortune, we'll just put that right there. We should be able to uh, disabled. Thank you. And we'll put this up here. And what was it? Right there? Yeah, okay. So we'll come around here. Let me just show you real quick. We'll do a trigger. We'll set one second. And then we'll do a camouflager right here. And we're going to find all of them. And the bounds. We're not going to update the bounds. We're just going to do uh, just all the sides. And we're going to camouflage with say spruce can you let me type spruce we'll do this and just do this real quick there we go now that looks like spruce and we also happen to have a redstone emitter uh, that we can let me just show you real quick redstone emitter and see so that that block is now functioning as an inventory carry or signal carrier and a redstone emitter and a camouflager. That's why we're doing the advanced cable cluster. So anyway, I've got some work to do to set this thing up so that it's sending the right stuff into the right machine. Uh, while I was recording the last clip, it turns out I inadvertently pushed the stream button. And so for those of you that got a sneak peek, kudos to you. So anyway, we're back here. I have done a little bit of progress. We lost some of our roof to a fire, I believe, from a lightning storm. No problem, I will take care of that later. But back here, like I said before, um, I think I covered this. Purple is going to be the fortunables chest. The orange is for the uh, smeltables, induction smelter. And then the light blue is for the pulverizable. Red is a new one. That's for the redstone furnace. We're going to be putting dust and pulverized items in there. And we should be um, handling that correctly with the inventory manager. Now, one thing that I took care of off camera was setting up the RF Tools builder block. And that's the bounding box that we're going to be uh, running with right there. So those nine blocks, and that's exactly where the block gates are going to be putting out the fortunable items. We'll turn that preview mode off. And let's take a look real quick at the flow charts. They're kind of similar in uh, fairly superficial ways. Uh, the overall structure is the same. The change camo, I have that one always on because I have noticed a slight problem with uh, how we're doing the redstone emitting. So we'll get to that in just a moment. But let's take a look at the induction smelter. Almost all of the flowcharts 
function like this. You see I've got them split into different command blocks here. They all function like this. We've got a trigger, so every second, and then we're checking a condition. In this case, we're looking in the machine, in this case the induction smelter, for a specific set of items, and in this case it's an AND. So if there is a cinnabar and a ferrous ore, then, uh, we, well, we don't do anything. So on the true part, we don't do anything. We go to the false part. We make sure that in the orange inner chest, we've got one of each of those items. And, and if there are, then we grab one of each of those items from that chest and put it into the induction smelter. And that's rinse and repeat, essentially, for the other two machines. The pulverizer, same thing. We're checking, checking the pulverizer. You can't see it right there. Uh, same thing for the chest and where it goes. And then down in the furnace, same, same thing. Check the furnace, check the smeltables chest, and then put it from the smeltables chest into the furnace. So there we go. The big difference here is the fortunables because, well, we have nine of these block gates that we need to be putting blocks out of or placing blocks from. So what we've got is a variable that houses all of those. Okay, so let's just let's just bring this up. We should see block gate. All right, so all nine of those are selected and we put that into this white variable and then we've got an empty variable for our index and that's where we're going to be putting the block gate that we're dealing with in the for each loop. So uh, in the for each loop we check the particular block gate that we're on and kind of like we did before if it's got any of these items in front of it we're not going to do anything. False and then we go into inventories we grab from the fortunables chest rinse and repeat all the way down. Okay now the RF Tools Builder Block requires a little bit of a special process here because it only operates if it has a redstone signal. So we need to use the redstone emitter to take care of that. So also if we have any items of what we're interested in for, for our uh, fortunables, then we're going to emit a redstone signal from the west side give it a pulse of five seconds. That, that makes sure that we get anything coming in and we extend the pulse as it continues. So uh, as the block gates continue placing blocks, if, if those happen to finish or the, the chest happens to run out, well, we will have a little bit extra time on the RF tools block. And then we also update the camouflage, although I think that's somewhat messed up. So just to give you an idea of how this is gonna work, I realize I don't have my sound up at the moment. Let's let's see if we can bring that up here. I did not hear anything. You may not have heard anything. It's not like we are actually doing uh, much on the sound. Okay, so the chest sound. There we go. Let's throw in uh, some diamond ore. Okay, and that processed. You don't see it because the moment that the that the block hits the area that the redstone signal. See, it does that. I think that's a bug in Steve's factory manager because my camo is not updating. So I've got to figure that out. Anyway, any who, anyhow. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll worry about that later. Let's throw some of that into the smeltables. You can see that stuff's coming into the redstone furnace. There we go. And then uh, over here, throw in some cinnabar, some ferrous ore. And then the induction smelter goes, and there we go. All right. So uh, just to give you another example there. So I am pulverizing the redstone instead of smelting or uh, fortuning it because it gives a chance of getting cinnabar ore, and that's pretty important for the ferrous production. So what we're going to do now is uh, not worry about the rain. We'll go into the storehouse and take a look at how we're getting those items out of our ME system into the ore processing system. So I've got a series of export buses here. This one is for the induction smelter. This one is for the regular redstone furnace. Let's take a look at the pulverizables. Right here's a pulverizable. So let's just throw that on like so. 
And then this one, uh, where's the other pulverizable? Not that one. I found out that draconium ore, uh, I, don't, I can't remember if I said this already or, or not, but draconium ore does not respond, or the RF tools doesn't deal with that one. So every time I was throwing draconium ore into the fortunable's chest, uh, we had some issues. So this is going to be fortunable. So let's just throw that there. And then this one, fortunable also. And then this is for the smeltables like so. And then this one also smeltables. And then this one's a different smeltables. So we should see that we're getting exports over to our ore processing. And I hope that the fortunables are not causing any issues. So you can hear those going. And that's a good thing. So it's going to take a while. Whoa, come on. And you see the pulverizer is working. Induction smelter, working. Redstone furnace, working. And you can hear that items are getting broken. And just the builder block is pretty quick about that whenever the block gate throws those blocks out. So we don't really see those downside is that my camouflage is not updating and I think that has to do with Steve's factory manager. So anyway, I'm going to dress this up, but we've run out of time for today. I've done far too much explaining. So hopefully you enjoyed. If you did, a like is always appreciated, but thank you again so much for sharing a little bit of your time with me today. And uh, hopefully this gives you some inspiration for your own bills. If it does, send me some screenshots. I'd love to see them. Anyway, that's it for now. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.